live from the Computer History Museum in Mountain View, California. It's the Cube, covering DevNet Create 2018. Brought to you by Cisco. Hi, welcome back to the Cube. My name is Lauren Cooney, and I'm here today with Matt Johnson, who is a technologist at uh, Cisco with Cisco DevNet. Hi, hey. Matt. Hey, how's it going? Good to see Pretty you. Pretty good. Good to see you again too. Uh, so, what's going on here? What is what's going on at the show, and what are you working on? Oh, sure. So, the show in general is just this ability for us. You know, Cisco DevNet have always had quite a large and well growing mm -hmm. presence at Cisco Live, kind of Cisco's. Um, Europe and US yearly conferences. Mm -hmm. But this is the second year we've done Create and it's really an opportunity to kind of take um, the real developer angle, the makers, the API integrators, kind of the real kind of developer ecosystem um, that's growing around Cisco's products and our APIs mm -hmm. and just kind of focus on that audience. So, you know, all the content here is, is developer for developer. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's just really nice to be able to experiment in a bit more of an open format. Yeah, exactly. So it's kind of that, that DIY environment yeah. of, you know, developers that are coming in and really doing all this stuff and starting to innovate on their own. Yeah, absolutely. And what I'm really excited about here, we have the, um, we have kind of a, a two-day hackathon running at the same time as the event. Um, and so instead of that just being a little bit of time spent between sessions, um, these are teams that have already kind of been working behind the scenes on the run-up to the event. So they've already kind of met each other virtually through collaboration. Mm -hmm. They've already worked out what kind of problem space they want to solve. They've already started working on kind of sample and POC code. So yeah. the idea that at the end of a two-day conference, we could actually see some working solutions to real problems that our partners and our customer ecosystem are seeing, I think that's, that's quite great. an exciting idea. Yeah, Mandy Whalen was just on with us, and oh, she actually fantastic. talked a little bit about that. And you know, so these guys will be up for 24 hours, hacking on stuff. Yeah. Hopefully, we'll see some great solutions come the end, and you know, we'll talk about it here on the Cube. Yeah. So, so tell me about what you're doing today at Cisco DevNet. Sure. So from from one style of hacking to another. Um, we're actually running this uh, demo called the Black Hat White Hat Challenge. Mm -hmm. And I went to, I've always been a bit of a kind of hobbyist pen tester. I've Never, liked, no. I've liked breaking things from a young age. Um, and I got to attend my first DEF CON in Las Vegas last mm -hmm. year. And you know, coming from an evangelism background, coming from kind of doing workshops and talks and demos, um, I was absolutely amazed at the interactivity um, of pretty much everything that goes on at the Black Hat Hacking Conference, mm. uh, sorry, the DEF CON Hacking Conference. Um, mm. My apologies. Um, they have you know, hands-on IoT villages where you can go and try hacking against mm -hmm. all the hardware. Um, there's kind of labs and tutorials for people mm -hmm. that are maybe just getting into kind of that side of hacking and penetration testing. So mm -hmm. I kind of brought that back and I've always had a, a passion for security. Mm -hmm. And IoT nowadays, we're in a situation where a lot of these devices we're starting to bring into our homes and our businesses and things um, are built mm -hmm. to a budget. They're built cheap, they are not security devices. Mm -hmm. People aren't thinking of security, um, they're thinking of functionality when they're building those. Mm -hmm. So, you know, someone that makes fridge freezers isn't going to be thinking about, you know, the 10 year security roadmap for that fridge freezer. Mm -hmm. They're going to be thinking about selling the latest smart freezer. Exactly. Um, and so I wanted to kind of bring some of that hands on DEF CON style. Uh, hacking mm -hmm. um, into a real world scenario. So at security conferences and at developer conferences, we always talk about things being insecure mm -hmm. and we talk about needing to think about security. But what we have is a booth here where um, we actually take off the shelf IoT devices mm -hmm. and in a curated path, we are getting attendees with no background in kind of pen testing to use real world hacking tools and real exploits mm -hmm. against those devices um, to build their access into that network and eventually get to the goal which is getting into a little safe with like a prize inside. And all of that is real off the shelf IoT, it's real security. And the aim of that is to kind of... So they're actually cracking the safe. They're cracking the safe, they're cracking into Wi-Fi, they're um, getting onto the guest Wi-Fi and then finding a vulnerability in the router which gets them onto the wired network. Mm -hmm. So that'd be like a, a guest network in a corporate environment mm -hmm. or a guest network in a hotel, yep. getting you onto the hotel's infrastructure network and then to a camera. So this is like straight up Hacker One, straight right? Straight up, yeah, exactly, right? Oh, Which is perfect. This that is the, great. Yeah, exactly. Um, so that's what we're doing and, and the idea is just to kind of stop talking about it and start showing. Mm -hmm. This is not stuff you need to 
be super good at. This is stuff you can Google, the tools are out there, the tools are getting more and more easy to use. And also vulnerabilities are becoming more and more common because of the growth of IoT. Um, there were double the number of um, CVE, like known vulnerabilities in the wild in 2017 than there were in 2016. Okay. And that's because of this constant pace of, of new devices. So we're kind of showing that these are really crackable by anyone with a bit of time and research. Um, and then also showing kind of what can be done about that. And you know, even without kind of the proactive and firewalls and things like that, just getting a, a developer audience thinking about this stuff, getting them you know, fresh in their mind. You know, these are the kind of places we should be focusing on IoT security because it's these developers that will be writing code in those products today. I think, or I think that's week. great, and I think security is so important today with, with yeah. everything going on, and then there's Facebook and right. testimonies that are happening today, and you know, lots of different things. Now, what are you using to actually kind of fill these holes, fill these you know, kind of security vulnerabilities that you're you know, using with these off-the-shelf IoT devices? Sure, so what we're showing is how kind of, if you know you have these devices on your network, obviously layering things like um, Cisco's next-gen firewalls in line with those devices has signatures that will detect, it's not going to patch the device itself because that might be from another vendor or an IoT camera or a light switch or something, but it's going to detect the malicious traffic trying to attack that device mm -hmm. and drop it. So, you're kind of protecting your perimeter, you're stopping a vulnerable mm -hmm. device becoming an actual hack. Mm -hmm. um, alternatively, from a, a personal perspective, as we start looking at how we consume hardware in our homes and businesses, mm -hmm. I actually really like kind of the uh, Meraki model and the you know, Nest Cam model mm -hmm. and you know, all the other camera vendors which charge you a subscription. Because mm -hmm. if you buy hardware one-off, you have no idea whether that, bud you know, whether that price for that hardware allotted budget for the development team to keep thinking about security, or whether that team doesn't exist anymore mm -hmm. and they're off building the next product. Yep. Whereas if you're buying something on kind of a subscription basis, even though the hardware's in your home, mm -hmm. you know that their profit is based on them keeping your mm -hmm. product up to date. Definitely. So you expect you know, real-time updates, you expect mm -hmm. timely security updates. And so I think that kind of a, a software as a service style delivery mm -hmm. of on-prem hardware um, is definitely a more secure approach. Yeah, and the Meraki model is definitely moving forward is one of the prevalent models that we, you, you know, exactly. Cisco has. Yeah. And it's, you know, that plug and play, easy to use, get it up and running, et cetera. Exactly, and, and then fabulous. on the back of that, you mm -hmm. know that there's people working on those security things, which mm -hmm. isn't something you think about when you buy it for its APIs mm -hmm. and its plug and play and its ease of use, mm -hmm. but just knowing that that is there and it's a, you know, you're, you're paying for that development is a good thing. Where do you see most of these vulnerabilities? And in, you know, I know you have a lot of background in cloud computing and, you know, in in these arenas. But, you know, where do you see most of these vulnerabilities? So it's a big a, question. Yeah, but. Um, I mean, a lot of the it, hackers are going to wherever you know is easiest for the amount of time and effort. Mm -hmm. You know, certainly when we see kind of um, malicious actors kind of looking for a large footprints, mm -hmm. large um, building botnets, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there could be a very, very clever attack that requires a lot of time and effort, or there could be an IoT device that you know there's going to be four million of them sold online. They're going to go for, for those. Um, and like I said, these devices are low power, built to a budget. Um, you can get them into your hands on like a mm -hmm. SaaS service online, so people can take them apart. They can have a look at the code inside them. They can have a look at the operating system. So it's quite easy to find vulnerabilities on these IoT devices. Oh, yeah. So that is definitely a growing area. Um, also, the level for harm on those kind of vulnerabilities, mm -hmm. if we're talking about internet-connected healthcare, internet-connected mm -hmm. hospital equipment, mm -hmm. you know, control valves for factories that may or may not be mm -hmm. dealing with certain kind of materials. Um, you know, that is, is definitely a focus, both from a security industry perspective mm -hmm. and also kind of where we're seeing um, hackers targeting. That's great. So, so tell me a little bit about what else you're working on right now. I think I always find it interesting to hear from you what you're kind of hacking yeah, with. And sure. So that's my, um, that's my kind of security hobby come 
part-time role, I guess, within DevNet. I, Love I it. quite like that kind of hands-on security evangelism. A lot of other stuff I'm doing is all around kind of um, open source and microservices and containers. So we're doing lots of work internally with Kubernetes right now, um, proof of concepting some new uh, user space networking code, oh, great. which would allow basically the network your traffic takes from your uh, application in a container right out to the network card to be a user space app. So you know, you're not stuck with the networking that a cloud provider gives you. If you want to test your application fully, like mm -hmm. packet to app back to the wire, mm -hmm. and know that that network is also going to go with you when you deploy anywhere, um, we're going to be able to do that. That's fabulous. And there's also some real performance benefits mm -hmm. to kind of not going in and out of the Linux kernel. Yep. So we can kind of saturate 40 gigabits a second mm -hmm. from a container straight down to the wire um, on kind of commodity compute like UCS or like you know any x86 server. So really excited about that. It's in development at the moment. That's all open source. Under it the, will be all open source it's, then. It's all open source already under the FDIO project, FD.io. Oh. Um, the integration into Kubernetes is ongoing mm -hmm. um, and obviously will be open sourced as it, as it gets developed. But that's super exciting. Um, also, just that whole miraculification, if I can say that, this idea of turning on-prem devices into kind of black box, mm -hmm. you know, cloud managed, cloud updated. Yeah. You have an IT team, they're just remote and kind of paid for in a SaaS model, mm -hmm. rather than having to manage and patch those devices on-prem. Oh yeah. You know, we currently do that with switches and mm -hmm. routers and cameras, as I'm sure you know, the, the Meraki product portfolio. Mm -hmm. I don't see why we don't do that with on-prem compute. Why don't we do that with on-prem, you know, Kubernetes clusters? Why should a Kubernetes cluster, just because it's sat in your data center, mm -hmm. be any different in terms of usability, billing, management, mm -hmm. than the one you get from um, Google Cloud Platform or Azure yeah. or AWS. It, it should have the same user experience. So across those two areas, mm -hmm. yeah, that's that's where I'm spending most of my time Great. at the moment. Well, well, we're kind of wrapping up here. Tell, tell me, like, what is the most exciting thing for you that's coming down the path in the next six months or so? Um, can you tell us? I cannot tell you the most exciting thing, I'm afraid. Um, it has to do with everything I'm talking about, kind of the networking, the, the as a service. Um, super excited about user space networking. Mm -hmm. um, we have customers that are looking to do kind of real-time video mm -hmm. pipelines for broadcast in containers. Mm -hmm. um, and being able to do that on-prem or in cloud or wherever, and this uh, FDIO VPP technology, I think will really unlock that. That's great. So real use cases, and yeah, super excited. Great. Matt, thank you so much for coming on today. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, my pleasure as well. This is Lauren Cooney, and we'll be right back from the show here at Cisco DevNet Create.